Looking back at history, few media formats have been able to bridge multiple changes in buying patterns and technology. And due to this reality, as well as many other musical revolutions that it caused, the existence of the compact cassette forever remains in a class all its own. The history of what's commonly called the cassette tape actually goes all the way back to the 1930s, when the AEG company began to release reel-to-reel -reel magnetic tapes, which at the time were used almost exclusively in recording studios and at radio stations. Even throughout the 40s and most of the 50s, due to the cost and the massive weight of these machines, they were very rare in residential or personal settings, but this would change when vacuum tubes started to be replaced by transistors. However, even in its earliest years, you can find a number of avant music pioneers working with tape manipulation, and people like Rune Lindblad remain absolutely vital to the progression of experimental music. In the late 1950s, there were a number of failed attempts at styles of cassettes for the mass market, and it really wasn't until 1962, when the Philips company premiered their compact cassette, that things really took off in the world of cassette tapes. The reason it's called a compact cassette tape is because when you compare it to other cassettes and reel-to-reels, as well as the early prototypes, it's very, very small. And this was a purposeful aim trying to give something to the buying public. In around November of 1964, you see the first players and recorders hitting the commercial market. And within only a few years, millions of them had been sold around the world. At about this time, you also see a number of different music companies trying to find ways to sell music on cassettes. As cassette players and recorders were initially made only for dictation, and that led to one of the biggest drawbacks to early cassettes, sound quality. These early cassettes were truly inferior in terms of of the overall audio quality, but by the mid-70s it had improved drastically, and this is one of the key factors in the quick demise of the 8-track. This rise in fidelity encouraged a number of other companies to embrace the cassette, and in 1979 you have Sony introducing the first Walkman, and that was perhaps the largest revolution in personal music enjoyment ever. As the 1980s wore on, cassette tapes quickly overtook vinyl in terms of overall music sales, as not only were they portable, but they were far more durable than vinyl, and they were less expensive both to create and to purchase. The recording abilities of cassette tapes was truly revolutionary, as what we now call the mixtape became the vehicle for a massive social and cultural shift. And it's one of the most obvious points where the music industry claimed that its own customers were abusing a technology that they themselves supported. However, cassette tape's place at the top was relatively short-lived, as by 1993, CD sales had begun to overtake them, and by 1995, they were well ahead. And by 2001, cassette tapes accounted for less than 5% of the sales market. Over the past few years, there's been an underground resurgence in terms of cassette sales of old albums, as well as new bands releasing their new material on cassettes, as more than anything, the durability, the simplicity, and a bit of the novelty is really tough to top in terms of a physical format. It also points to the fact that there's a large portion of people who never abandon the compact cassette as a music format, and due to its longevity for more than 80 years, there's no media as important or as storied as the compact cassette. Oh!